Voice Research, and today I want to tell you about one of my favorite synthesizers. It's called the Korg Volca Bass, and it's a fully analog synthesizer with a digital interface. Today I want to tell you about the main functions of the synth, and also build a simple sequence, I'll put some effects on so you can hear how it sounds in the midst of a song. Let's get started. I've been using this little bad boy for about six, seven years now. And I have to say, because it's analog, it puts out a really big sound and is really good for making dance music and also experimental music. Um, you can pretty much make any kind of music you want with it. Um, but to get started understanding how to uh, go about using it and getting started with understanding it, um, the first thing you should look at is the VCO, which is the voltage control oscillator. Uh, this is what puts out the sound, and there are three oscillators on this, as you can see. Um, you can mute them and unmute them uh, for whatever you want to use. Um, the next is the envelope generator, and that's going to give you access to attack, decay, release, and um, cut off envelope generator intensity. Um, next, the voltage control filter is really important. It's, it gives you the cutoff knob and the peak, which is kind of like a resonance knob. The octave knob uh, chooses between six octaves. So you'll want to set your octave uh, once you choose which VCO you want to use. Next is the LFO, which is a low frequency oscillator, and you can adjust the rate and the intensity of the LFO. The most important button on the Volca bass, I would say, is the function button, because that's what engages and disengages all of the other uh, parts of the synth. So if you look down here, you'll see VCO group, um, you can choose which group or which type of group you want by holding function and pressing one of these buttons. You can have um, the oscillators triggering independently, two of them together and then one on its own and then all three together to create a sort of like harmonization effect. Um, next you can engage the LFO targets, which you have access to an amp, a pitch, and a cutoff. And uh, those can all be engaged at the same time or just one at a time. You can change the shape of the LFO wave to be saw or square. Each of the VCOs can be changed from saw or square. Uh, you can have sustain. And in order to turn on this amp generator, or this envelope generator, you have to engage the amp envelope generator by pressing the on button with function. You can also clear stuff if you want to clear parts, clear all parts, clear the active step or the slide, but that's a little more advanced. We won't talk about that just yet. So first let's choose an oscillator and you can adjust the pitch with these pitch knobs, but we'll just leave it off for now. The reason why it started playing is because I'm playing another device that's uh, MIDI syncing to this one, but I'll, we'll talk more about that later because I'm actually syncing a kick drum so that I can play on time, but you don't hear the kick drum. So what I like to do is in order to record a note, just press the record button and you'll see it blinking along to the tempo that I have set in my DAW. And we'll just play a note. I'll play C, it starts on A, but I'll play C so that we can harmonize easily. So yeah, that works. Now I can choose another oscillator and play another note. 
and I won't record it just yet because I want to see uh, what it sounds like so I can make sure I like it. We can increase the octave maybe to make it more interesting. doesn't work, you can clear the part. So I can, let's try it again. Okay. There, that's on time. Let's choose another one. Maybe go a little higher with the octave. Okay, it's not a Mozart melody, but good enough for demonstrating what we can do with this. So now that we've got our part recorded, we can move on to talking about how the envelope generator affects the sound. So so yeah, let's gauge everything and then we'll engage the envelope generator. I always like it when you turn it down a little bit, turn the filter down, unless I'm using effects. And now that the amp envelope gener generator is on, you can hear the decay and release. opening it up or closing it down the wave and making it a little shorter. We can mute that third oscillator so it's just these two playing. If I change the VCO group to just uh, two and one, you'll hear these two oscillators being doubled, so playing at the same time. And whereas this one's muted, you don't hear it, but if I unmute it, you hear it again. So if I change the VCO group to where all of them are, all the v, uh, VCOs are playing at once, you'll hear them harmonizing. can hear. Turn a pitch LFO on maybe and give it some movement there. Turn on the amp envelope. Change it a little bit. Change the LFO wave envelope to saw. Let's see what happens when I change the wave, the wave shape of the VCOs. Gives a little bit different sound. Subtlety is really good with this machine because the knobs are so small. It's better just to make really tiny little movements with the knobs so that you don't get a really extreme change unless that's what you want. So the next thing that we can edit now that we have our, our pattern is the octave 
respective steps and the slide steps of each VCO. So I'm going to mute this one. In fact, I don't like that part, so I'm going to I'm going to select the part. I'm going to clear that part. Let's re redo that one. I'm going to change the octave down. Now, you can already hear what this sounds like with a little bit of reverb and distortion and compression on it. It'll sit really nicely with a kick drum. So going back to what I was talking about, we can uh, change the active step and the slide edit step to give it more of a rhythmic, like funky feel. So let's choose... We'll choose VCO3 for that and we'll hold down function slide edit and this is how it's set to uh, mimic how I recorded it or to reflect just how I recorded it when I recorded it live. Now if we add and take away some of these you can see how it changes the rhythm. So interesting how uh, just touching one button can change so dramatically. And it won't do anything if there's no note recorded during that space and time. It'll just do something if the note shows up and you add it or subtract it. That's pretty cool. Let's go on to the next one. So we're editing the slide of VCO2 now. And you can see how like in a live situation, you can really alter the rhythm of your bass line quickly and easily if you just take a note of which ones you want to engage or disengage depending on what rhythm you're trying to go for in that moment. Let's try that for VCO1. In VCO1 you can tell like there's a long note there because it takes up a lot of space. Yeah, and it just works so well if you put some delay on it or some reverb and just start playing with the timing. See what I did there? I just muted VCO1. That's what happens when you press the sustain button. Sustain button works well if you lower the decay release. It's a very versatile instrument if you know how to use it. Um, so yeah, working with the slide edits and also the active step, I forgot to mention the active step. This um, works similarly to the slide edit, 
but uh, it takes out a certain part in time. So let's see. You can see what I mean um, if I mute a couple of these and just work with VCO1. So the active step of VCO1. a really great groove box. And once you've spent years with it like I have, you'll know it like the back of your hand. And that's when the fun really starts. I'm Christina Broussard for Noise Box Research. Thanks for watching.